welcome to St Matthew's Church. It's so great that you've joined us this morning. Um, you might be wondering why I'm standing on my doorstep. Um, this morning we're talking about welcome. Um, we're looking at our values at the moment and this morning is all about welcome. And although this is as far as we can get in each other's houses right now, we still want to think about what it means to welcome each other, so for, that, for that to be a value that we have at church. We're so glad that you've joined us. We hope that you've had a good week. And I always take a moment to just still ourselves and remind ourselves of God's presence this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This morning we're going to have uh, our, one of our life groups helping to lead some of the service, my life group in fact, and so that's really great. And and Matt's going to be helping us to explain um, and think about this value of welcome. Why don't we worship together? Thank you. 
worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. Live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever Yeah. Mm-hmm.
Heavenly Lord, you long for the world's salvation. Stir us up from apathy. Restrain us from the excess and revive us in new hope that all creation will one day be healed in Jesus Christ our Lord. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, generously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died, more than that who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 <laughs> Yes. Nearly got it wrong. I forgot what we meant to say. (laughs) Right. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. I missed. I didn't know you were going to do that, B. Going in, Luke. Just going in. I'm not editing it. (laughs) Hello, everyone at church. Here we go then. When he noticed how you editing it, you You editing it. Okay, let's go. When he noticed how the guests picked the places of honour at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honour. For a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give this person your seat. Then, humiliated, You'll have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place so that when you, your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honoured in the presence of all the other guests. All those who will exalt themselves will be humbled and those who will humble themselves will be exalted. Then Jesus said to his host, when you give a luncheon or dinner, Do not invite your friends, your brothers or sisters, your relatives or your rich neighbours. If you do, they may invite you back and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you. Praise to you, Christ. We are people of the kingdom. And here at St Matthew's, we've adopted six particular values. We looked at the first value last week when we looked at family. And uh, next up is welcome. Here's what we mean by welcome. We practice hospitality, extending friendship to the other and creating space for a growing family. We want everybody to be welcome, regardless of ability ethnicity, sexual orientation, social standing or anything else. Because we recognise that Jesus invites us to come to him as we are. And when we talk about welcome, we want to be clear, we don't mean familiarity, just being familiar with one another or valuing the people that we are used to. So welcome is a value that's really rooted in grace. God's grace is is amazing as the hymn goes and we live in a world that needs grace more than anything else. We all know deep down I guess that something is wrong with the world 
And yet instead of turning to God for help, most people naturally run from God, the only one who can heal us and give us life. And until we believe that God is truly for us and not against us, we're likely to keep on running and to keep on hiding. And that's why grace is, is the starting point for, for all significant spiritual growth. Plenty of other options offer people a way to kind of earn approval, to earn God's approval. But grace says that God accepts you and loves you as you are. And yet most people, sadly, don't associate Christianity with grace. What they feel often is the, the opposite of grace. It is law, this sense of zero tolerance and judgment and condemnation. One of my favourite chapters in the whole of the Bible is Romans chapter 8. And, and it says that even though we fail to live to God's standards, even though we often fail to meet our own standards, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans 8 verse 1. Not only are we set free from the fear of judgment and the fear of condemnation through Jesus, but God also pulls us into the closest possible of relationships. And so it goes on in verse 16 to say we are God's children. We looked last week that we are family, God's family. And that God is for us. He's not mad at us. Verse 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? The answer, nobody. God makes the unacceptable acceptable. And God welcomes the unwelcomable, if that's even a word. God welcomes us into relationship. He lets us live in relationship with him, despite the fact that we continually try to play God in our own lives or in others' lives. That we kind of usurp his authority and we follow our will and our choices rather than his. And yet, despite all of that, God draws us close in love and accepts us as we are, if we are willing. Later in Romans 15 verse 7 it says, Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. And that's what we're seeking to do in welcome. That passage goes on to say that those who were thought to be far away from God, will actually discover his mercies and find hope in him. And yet most people, most people assume that they will not be welcomed until they change. That they won't be welcomed by God and certainly won't be welcomed by church people unless they get their act together first. And so we must declare in our words and in our lives and tell them over and over again, that God says, come as you are, and so do we. That's one of the key messages in this value of welcome. At Gateway Church in the States make this really clear. They print this in, in their notice sheets every single week. It has the heading, come as you are. And then it says this. You don't have to dress up. You don't have to be any particular age. We couldn't care less who you voted for in the last election. And please, don't feel the need to pretend about anything. This is a place where God meets seeking people. People who are far from perfect. That means anyone is welcome. No matter where you are at on your spiritual journey. So, they say, learn at your own pace, ask questions, seek. We believe that as you do that, you will find what you're looking for. You'll learn how to relate to God and you'll experience Christian community. And here's the big thing. You will change. 
you will be transformed. Join us as we seek God together. Just come as you are. I love that. Many people can't believe that God will accept them and love them uh, until they they see Christians giving that message so clearly, until they are shown that that is actually true by the Christians that they know. And yet so often even the Christians, even the followers of Jesus still feel the need to, to do things or to succeed or to somehow prove that we are acceptable to God. Because we don't yet trust that we are fully accepted as we are and that God is for us and not against us. Jesus tells story after story after story to help us take hold of this fundamental truth. You know, God is like a shepherd, he says, risking his 99 sheep and his own safety to go after the one sheep that is lost. Or God is like a father whose son rejects him and moves out and squanders half of the family fortune. And yet when that son returns, the father humiliates himself. He runs out to meet his lost son with open arms and welcomes him in. Or another one, God is like a man who throws a party for his son and tells his servants to go out into all the streets and to invite the good and the bad. Because anyone who will come is welcome to the banquet. Over and over and over again, we also must demonstrate to people that God is not their enemy. That actually he is the one who's been searching for them, longing to draw them near in relationship and to help them become all that they were intended to be. We need to remember that it's not our job to fix people. God is the one who transforms lives. That is God's work to do. Now, that doesn't mean, of course, that we that we don't point out sinful or destructive behaviour, but it does mean that that shouldn't be our main focus. If you found a painting <coughs> by the, the famous um, painter Rembrandt and it was all kind of covered in mud, chances are if you realised what it was, you wouldn't focus on the mud. You certainly wouldn't treat it like mud. Your main concern wouldn't be the mud at all, although it would need to be removed. No, far more likely you'd be excited to have something so valuable in your care. But you'd also recognise that if you tried to clean it up by yourself, that you might damage it. You might have seen this restoration that was done a couple of years ago now. I just love how this turned out. Now a pretty big problem for the real restorers. The fresco wasn't priceless, but it is valuable and it needs fixing. Experts are not too hopeful. This is what can happen if we do it ourselves. And so instead, we, we might carefully bring this work of art to a master who could guide us and help us to restore it to the condition originally intended. When people begin treating one another as God's masterpiece waiting to be revealed, then God's grace grows in their lives and they begin to grow and be transformed. So when you meet someone who is so different from yourself, think about it for a moment. Perhaps it's someone who's sleeping rough someone living with substance abuse, or maybe a really argumentative atheist, or someone who holds wildly different political views to your own. Think about it. When you, when you meet that kind of a person, what thoughts come to your mind? Are they thoughts that focus on what you think needs to change in them? Or thoughts that focus on their worth as people? In other words, when you look at them, do you see the mud or do you see 
the masterpiece. Now, here's where it starts to get really tricky. If we're going to welcome people like this, to say to people, come as you are, whatever your background and your circumstances. Well, what if people misunderstand our welcome as us agreeing with beliefs and behaviours that, that God would not agree with? It seems as though Paul, the apostle, might have had this thought uh, himself. In Romans 6, he says this, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does this mean we can go on sinning? Of course it doesn't. No, we're meant to grow through relationship. And this happens best in communities of welcome. Communities where people know that they can come just as they are. Sure, people may misunderstand. They may take it as, as license to do what they want. They may never change. But as I've said, changing people, transforming lives is God's job and not ours. Welcoming people is not the same as agreeing with all of their choices or their beliefs or their behaviours. One of the most challenging parts of welcome is working out how to be welcoming and also confront those unloving or destructive behaviours that people display. We've got to be really sensitive to God's spirit, asking God to help us see, well, what's the trajectory of this person's life? Which way are they moving right now? Is this a person who is moving towards God or away from God? Actually, if a person is not committed to following Jesus in community, then we can't expect them to act like it. But on the other hand, for those who choose to follow Jesus, there is a clear expectation that we will grow and that we will be transformed more into the likeness of Jesus. And so in that sense, we come as we are but we don't stay that way. There's an expectancy that we grow. And we'll talk more about this when we look at our value of expectancy. But let me finish by just talking a little bit about what does welcome look like in practice? I think we can be clear that words alone are not going to do it. Saying that people are welcome is not enough, but it is a good start. Even being super friendly the first time somebody comes to us isn't quite enough. What we're talking about here is going out of our way to welcome people into the family. That's what we are after. The kind of welcome where we put ourselves out in order to bring others into the family. I want to leave us with this picture that I've uh, I kept coming back to as I thought about us being a welcoming church. And the image is of a family welcoming a new baby. When a family um, welcome a new baby into their midst, life is changed beyond recognition. Old patterns and routines very quickly go out the window. And everything for a short time is all focused on this new arrival. Everything is shaped around what does this baby need from us? How do we love this new life? How do we make sure this new life is nurtured and looked after and tended? And the thing is, doing that well, as any parent will know, is, is exhausting and it's inconvenient. And we have to change so much in order to welcome this child well. And of course, parents in that scenario might well long for a better night's sleep. They might long for a, an opportunity to get out and have coffee with a friend, like many of us at the moment. They might long just for that, that opportunity to finish a cup of tea while it's still hot. But we don't, because of that, resent the child. We don't, because of that, resent the fact that this baby is in our lives. We celebrate them. We 
you know, we, we coo over them and we, we shower them with love and affection because we're delighted that they are with us and we want this little life to know how loved they are. And yet so often in, in our churches, someone new comes into the family. Somebody discovers Jesus for themselves and they, they become part of this new church family. And we celebrate with them uh, in their baptism and we, we're friendly to them for a few weeks. And then we just kind of ignore the fact that they're there. You wouldn't do that with a baby. No, we have to nurture them. The role of the parents, the role of the existing family is to nurture this child into adulthood and maturity. It is a long term role to welcome somebody in. And so if we want to welcome well, we're talking about practising hospitality, extending friendship to the other. And crucially, it's creating space for a growing family. When a child is on the way, the parents get, you know, the clothes and the nappies ready and they they prepare a room and somewhere for them to sleep. We inconvenience ourselves and put ourselves out to make sure that everything is set for their arrival. Now, in our case, we don't always know when the arrival will be, but we should be assuming that people are coming into the kingdom and becoming part of the family all the time. And therefore, everything about who we are and how we operate should be about making space for the family to grow. Jesus invites us to come to him as we are. That's the kind of welcome we are called to extend to others. Why don't we pray? Jesus, we thank you that you have accepted us. You have welcomed us into your family. Thank you that we can come to you as we are. That there's nothing we had to do to clean ourselves up or make ourselves ready to be part of your family. You have done all of that for us. And may we extend that same welcome to others. Lord, we're sorry for those times where we have been resentful of new people coming in and getting involved and, and, and taking on leadership. Lord, we're sorry for those times where we have resented the focus on new people or young people. God, we want every single person to know that they are loved by you and they are welcome to be part of what you are doing here with us. And so would you help us to constantly be making space for the family to grow. In Jesus' name. Amen.
declare our faith in God. We believe, we believe in God, God the Father, Father, Father from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. And is named. We, believe we believe in God, God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith, 
and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with the power from on high. We believe in one Lord God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So now we're going to spend some time praying um, and just talking to God about um, the state of our world, the state of our hearts, um, and maybe together we could use the phrase, um, your kingdom come, your will be done, um, to help us as we go along through our prayers. Why don't we pray together? First off, let's pray for our world. Father God, we acknowledge that there is so much um, difficulty in the world right now. Lord, we come to you on our knees and we say, God, would you help us to see where you are? Would you help us to see um, where your goodness is? And God, would you help us to be people of welcome as we look at the world? Your kingdom come, your will be done. Now let's think about our city. God, we love the city of Wolverhampton and we know you do too. And Lord, we long for it to be a city of welcome, a city where people are not judged based on the colour of their skin, on their sexuality, on their ethnicity, on their class or anything else, God. But we, we long for Wolves to be a city where um, people are welcomed in, no matter what. And Lord, we just pray that over our city and we ask that you would help those um, in leadership to um, encourage that. Um, God, would you help us in our own hearts to, to be better at welcoming the other? God, let your kingdom come, your will be done. And Lord, we want to pray for our own homes. Right now, they're not potentially the easiest places to to do hospitality but we just ask that you would come and help us to show us what that looks like right now to extend welcome to our neighbours to those around us to our family lord whether that be over the phone or um, on a walk god would you help us to to know what it is to be people of welcome to those around us and as we move out of this season god would you make us ready to be hospitable again would you make us ready to be able to welcome each other into our homes and for us to be family together? Lord, let your kingdom come, your will be done. Why don't we end this time of prayer by praying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So we're coming to the end of our service, but we just want to share some family news with you and to keep you updated about things going on in the life of St Matthews. Um, as we've already been mentioned in this time of um, lockdown the church the wider church is inviting us all to fast um, on a thursday and to pray for the nation um, and so and there's some more information about fasting on the e-bulletin and on thursdays we're inviting the church community to do that together and we're also opening the church for individual prayer if you want to go and use that as a space to pray um, next week it's going to be opened um, from 12 till 2 and 5 till 7 so this Thursday, if you want to go, you can go in those two hour slots um, and use that as a space to pray. And also we want to create a visual um, sort of representation of our prayers to the community. And so we're inviting you to tie a ribbon on the handrails outside church. As again, just as a visual representation that we are praying for the community at this time and um, to display hope and light um, at this tricky time. So please get involved with that, walk past church and, and pray and tie a ribbon to be part of that. That would be really brilliant. Also, just to say that after um, the service today, we're going to have a Zoom catch up. It's really difficult to, to connect with one another at the moment um, in person, obviously, but we really want to stay connected with um, people's um, lives. So do join us on Zoom um, for tea and coffee and a catch up and we're going to have a couple of families 
updating us on what this year has been like for them. So do join us for that. Why don't we finish with a song and final blessing? so much for joining us this morning. I'm just going to pray God's blessing over us as we finish. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.